Special Delivery The Siberian family lived in a small village surrounded by birch trees and mud. For a long, long time they had been praying for a Bible so they could learn more about the God of earth and heaven. They didn't know anyone who had a Bible and to travel to the nearest town was impossible. So they kept on praying and waiting, believing that somehow God would answer their prayers. Then one night the youngest daughter had a dream. She dreamt that some English Christians knocked on their door with Bibles in their hands. So, believing that was a dream from God, they decided to make a big sign over their double gates saying, Jesus loves you, and then they waited some more. Every three days on their journey over to Mongolia, Pops would send the Land Rover into the nearby village to buy bread and to look for a well where the truck could fill up with drinking and washing water. If it looked as if the truck would be able to drive up to the well, the Land Rover would either call on the CB or come back and tell Props the situation. This particular village was about a quarter of a mile down a small muddy track that led off the main muddy track. OK, off you go, kids. And by the way, see if you can get hold of some asbestos rope so that we can stop the exhaust from blowing. Pops liked to hear the Mercedes V8 engine quietly singing along he wasn't too fond of the exhaust making a racket. The general concession was that Pops was just a little bit mad. Never in a million years would they be able to get hold of a piece of asbestos rope for his beloved truck in the middle of Siberia. On reflection, however, Pops wonders who was the maddest. Pops, who wanted to drive the length of Russia just to say hello to the missionaries who had presented themselves to God as a living sacrifice, or those he decided to go with him. The Land Rover group found the well but couldn't find anywhere that might sell bread. And then right in front of them there was a big there was big red letters. Jesus loves you. Hardly believing what they were looking at, the team got out of the Land Rover, pushed the big gates open, walked through the farmyard and knocked on the front door. The door was opened by a young girl who looked at them, shouted started crying and ran back into the house, soon to reappear with the rest of her family. Now all were shouting, crying, dancing and hugging the team, who were then dragged inside and made to sit down. Lots of food and drink appeared on the table, no vodka, and everyone started talking at once. Gradually, Jo, with her speaking book, started to understand what what had happened. The same faces that the young girl had seen in her dream were the faces that had appeared at her door and now were enjoying the very best of Siberian hospitality. Jo said to Mark, you'd better go and tell Dave what's happened and don't forget the Bibles. There was always a good stash of Bibles in different languages kept in the truck. Half an hour later, Pops and the rest of the team were joining in the celebrations and enjoying some excellent home cooking. After Pops felt that the team had done sufficient justice to the tasty food, he asked them, Have you asked about the rope? We need to get going. In those days, Pops was always in a hurry. No, and they hadn't, and were hoping Pops had forgotten all about it. How do you translate, please have you got a piece of asbestos rope that you can give us for the exhaust of the truck, from English into Russian, When I don't speak Russian and these lovely people don't speak English, Jo said to Pops, giving him one of her looks that she had perfected over 30 years of teaching young children. If anybody can, it's you, Jo, replied Pops, with more than a little sympathy for Jo's past students. Five minutes later, and Jo had again done the impossible. The father got up from his chair and beckoned Pops to follow him. They went out of the house into a barn close by. When the father opened the doors, Pops could see the barn was empty, except for a few cans and one or two hand tools. The father led Pops to the only window in the barn and pointed to something on the windowsill. When Pops Pops looked, he saw a foot-long piece of asbestos rope, which the father picked up and gave him. Pops knew it had been lying there a long time because it had left a perfect mark in the dust. Out of all the things that the father and his family could have prayed for, they had asked God for his book. They didn't care about any Western toys that they thought the English could have brought. To them, the written word of God was more precious than gold. And when his daughter was given the dream, it was just God saying, 
Don't worry, it's on its way. An hour later and Pops again was listening to the sweet singing of the V8 engine without the accompaniment of the exhaust, pulling Pops and the team eastwards, worshipping the God who always delivers on time. <laughs>